Hi guys and welcome to the channel. My name is Nick O'Leary and this week we are looking at tips and tricks to maximize your range on electric. Now this will apply whether you own a plug-in hybrid or electric vehicle. This guide is for you. Let's roll that intro. So you've all heard it, a ban on petrol and diesel in 2030. But first up, why? Why is there a ban on petrol and diesel cars? To put it bluntly, engines are dirty. They're noisy, they emit harmful greenhouse gases that affect our precious atmosphere and are harmful to human health. Now, manufacturers like Mercedes-Benz have been working to reduce this impact for years. With the introduction of start-stop technology where the engine shuts off at traffic lights to mild hybrids that turn the engine off as you slow down to technology in the actual engine system such as add blue they are all reducing emissions such as co2 and nitrous oxide but these improvements as great as they are are simply not enough to reduce the impact on the world now, a hybrid is one solution, so you have an engine in the front and then a battery in the back to help propel you along the road. But then electric vehicles are the thing, and a few select hybrids which is yet to be confirmed. Those two types of cars are going to be the ones you can buy from 2030 onwards that result in emission-free driving if you're driving an EV. Now, because of the different powertrains found in a hybrid or an electric vehicle, you may be keeping a very close and watchful eye on your range. And rightly so, driving on electric is cool. It's cheaper, it's quieter, it's environmentally friendly. So you just want to get the most out of your electric driving experience. And here are some tips and tricks I found to help with that. There are a few things that impact the range the most when driving on electric in a hybrid or even a fully electric car. And one of those things is traffic. Yes, traffic is an absolute pain, but there are a few things you can do to help avoid traffic in the first place. Maybe traveling at a different time of day, although that is not always possible, but certainly one thing you can do is use your sat nav, which will incorporate live traffic information and hopefully avoid it in the first place. But why is traffic an issue? Well, if we scale it right back down, and this car I'm sat in right now, and you ask me to push it, it requires quite a bit of effort. But then if you ask me to stop, and then start again, and stop, and start again, using all of this effort, and even like going up hills and things like that require more power than just starting on stationary. The idea is, is to accelerate and try and stay at that speed without having to slow down and then start again. But I know that's not always possible, but it's just something to be aware of. Now, eco driving is key. This isn't the eco mode, we'll cover this later, but this is more reading the road ahead and letting the car coast to a stop where possible. Now, coasting is when you take your foot off of the accelerator and just let the car kind of roll to a stop. Now, of course, you do have to factor in road conditions at the time, so you don't want to annoy the person behind you. But rather than just going straight for the brake pedal, sometimes it might be better to use the, the power you've used to get up to the speed and then just let the car roll to a stop. Now, all hybrids and electric cars in Mercedes have a thing called brake recuperation uh, to control the coasting, uh, but we'll cover this in a minute. Now acceleration is a big point as well. The more you press the accelerator pedal, the more power you consume. Now don't get me wrong, in uh, hybrids and uh, fully electric cars, the sport modes are very, very fun. They do accelerate very quickly, but there's a sure way to reduce your range. Even driving in eco mode, if you accelerate really quickly, then brake, all that power you've used to get going has just been lost. Now, yes, admittedly, I said, just like the previous point, there is brake recuperation, but it's better to have not used it in the first place if you're striving for maximum range. Now hybrids and electric are really, really cool. Believe it or not, this is actually on right now. There's no sound whatsoever. 
So this is where heating and air conditioning comes in, because this also does affect your range as well. Rest assured, things like the uh, lights, the digital instrument clusters, uh, potentially even charging your phone, and just lights, wipers, anything that uses power in the car, that power doesn't come from the high voltage battery. There are a couple of things that come from the high voltage battery, and that is, of course, acceleration, and then your heating and air conditioning. So this is what you'll also find will impact the range too. But there's no sound from this at the moment. Even though the electric motor and the engine is on, it's live, it's ready to go, there is no heating on at the moment. But if I switch that heating on, it's gonna switch on a thing called an auxiliary heater. And this makes heat for you. So compared to like an engine, like this um, SLC behind here, that actually makes heat because the engine's on, it's making heat. Whereas in a hybrid or an electric car, when you turn the heating on, you won't really hear it that much, but certainly if you're stationary, you'll hear this kind of whining noise from the, from the engine bay. And that is the car making heat for the cabin on the inside. And if it's really cold outside and you've asked the car to make it 25 degrees, it's gonna work hard to get that temperature back up. So the best thing around this of course, you're going to obviously want to use your heating. The best thing around this is to plug the car in, uh, say overnight, and you turn on a thing called pre-entry climate control. This will preheat the car so the car doesn't have to work as hard when you first set off in the morning. Now, fourth on this list is cold weather. Unfortunately, it's something we don't have any control over. Uh, but thankfully in the UK it only comes around, you know, a couple of months of the year. Speaking of these cold temperatures, lithium-ion batteries don't operate as effectively in cold uh, conditions. So even the battery that's in my camera right now, if I was outside, I would have to factor in that it won't last as long because it's exposed to the elements. You don't notice it too much with phones because they're usually pressed up against your leg or in a bag. But if I did leave it outside on, say, like a brick wall, it won't operate as effectively and the charge time uh, can even be increased as well. But something you must factor in with fully electric cars and hybrids that the range will go down. 20 degrees is the optimal temperature for the best range. Next up on the list is regenerative braking. Now regenerative braking is found in all Mercedes hybrids and electric cars. And quite simply, it recaptures some of the power used to accelerate in the first place when you brake. Now this can be adjusted uh, using the paddles. You can adjust how much brake recuperation there is, but rest assured every time your foot touches the brake pedal, some of that power is going back into the battery. Now it's physically impossible to uh, put all of that power you've used to accelerate back into the battery, but it's typically around just under half, uh, about 50% of the power that you've used to accelerate goes back into the battery. Now that is all factored into the range quoted in, the, in all of the cars you see on WLTP testing, so you're not gonna gain any more mileage. The mileage is what it is because of that brake recuperation. Um, but you can adjust it, which is the main thing. So using the paddles uh, when you're in an, an electric mode uh, on a hybrid or fully electric car, you can control how much brake recuperation there is. For example, you can have no brake recuperation and only when you touch the brake pedal, or you can have the car kind of do a bit of automatic brake recuperation using the radar system, which, which is quite clever. I'll probably cover brake recuperation on another topic um, in another video someday. Uh, maybe later on in the year, uh, but it's something that, that all hybrids and electric cars have and you can control it. So it's something to also factor in as well. Now in an internal combustion engine, 50 miles an hour is the approximate optimal speed for efficiency. However, when running on electric on a hybrid or a fully electric car, the rule of thumb applies, the faster you go, the more power you consume. And likewise, the slower you go, the less power you consume. So 
It's kind of your decision uh, what you do on the motorway because obviously you can go in the UK speeds up to 70 miles an hour. But of course, traveling faster, if you use that rule of thumb, you're going to use more power. So it's your decision what speed you travel at. If you want to maximize your range, say maybe stick around 50 or 60. But of course, if you're doing 70 or if you even speed, uh, then you're going to be using a lot more power and going to eat through that precious range. Now, general maintenance is something that can sometimes and often be overlooked, but little things just like tire pressures, for example, these do need to be checked uh, because if you have an underinflated tire, it's going to sag down to the ground more and thus increasing resistance. So tire pressures need to be correctly inflated. It's best to check them usually at least once a month just to make sure. And of course, yes, there is a tire pressure monitoring system to detect any punctures, but it won't tell you if the car's tire pressures are down just by a few PSI. So it's good to double check. Um, all of them can be found on the fuel filler cap on Mercedes-Benz cars. Next up on the list is excess weight. Now, if you didn't know, with uh, high voltage batteries, they do weigh quite a lot. Now, of course, you do need that, but any extra weight in the car, such as luggage, uh, things that you need to clear out, any bags in the back, roof bars, anything like that that you, you think is just staying in the boot, it's not necessary to keep them in. It's gonna eat into that range. It is minute, but it will all add up over time. As we draw to the last couple of tips and tricks, cruise control and limiter are definitely the ones up there to use if you're on a motorway or dual carriageway. So if you imagine you're traveling at 70 miles an hour, the, the way we drive is when you accelerate, you're trying to maintain that same, that same speed and you're accelerating a little bit, stopping too much accelerating while maintaining eye contact with the road and everything like that. So cruise control and limiter will help aid one part of the driving process for you. You'll just keep that same speed. And if you're lucky enough to have the driving assistance package, which I'll link up above, um, that will maintain the same distance to the car in front and make your life even easier. But that is quite rare on all Mercedes cars, uh, but it's a very, very good system. If you don't have that driving assistance package, then quite simply, it's just normal cruise control and or limiter. And you can use those two systems to help maintain your same speed uh, when cruising. And then finally guys, the final tip and trick today is a thing called Dynamic Select. Now Dynamic Select are basically the different drive modes found on the inside and they affect on electric cars, how much power is available to you and in hybrids, the different modes depending if you want the engine or the electric motor or a bit of both. So you can choose this uh, while moving, while driving or while stationary, anything like that to suit what you want to do. Now depending on if it's a plug-in hybrid or electric car they do vary there's about four or five of them uh, but you'll find words on the dynamic select switch such as individual for your own custom uh, mode and then you've got sport mode for maximum power output uh, comfort modes which are default electric which allows you to travel in electric modes you'll find this on a hybrid and then you have other ones like eco and even max range of course, to get the max range, it's a no-brainer on that one, max range is your best bet. In uh, Mercedes-Benz cars, from what I've seen, what it will do is actually use the radar system at the very top of the car. So, for example, in uh, this EQV here or an EQC, these will basically read the road ahead and s actually stop you going faster than the car in front. So it's actually a kind of basic version of the driving assistance package. And that's built into the car, which is quite cool. So there's no... You don't have to spec that, it's just standard equipment. Uh, it will also stop you going faster than the speed limit on the road, and it knows that through the traffic sign assist system, which is in it as well. So quite clever tech, really. Now, of course, uh, if you are trying that for the first time, it may feel a bit weird that you press the accelerator pedal and nothing happens. But there again, it's either stopping you from accelerating too close to the car in front 
all because there's a speed limit on the road. But of course, this is just a driving mode. It's optional, you don't have to do this, but that's the one you're gonna to need to use to maximize your range. Very cool thing on the EQC, when you have that on and you have a sat-nav destination in, it will actually show you your maximum speed to get to that destination. Because remember earlier, one of the points I said was the faster you go, the more power you use. So in this car, it will actually show you uh, you need to travel at 60 miles an hour or 62 miles an hour or, or whatever speed it might be to get there uh, to your next charge point. So it factors all that in. And of course, that is just a driving mode. If you don't like that, just use another mode. So that concludes all today's tips and tricks. And there we have it guys, that concludes this week's video on tips and tricks to maximize your range on electric. Now yes, a couple of the tips and tricks were more guidance and uh, just kind of knowledge, uh, but of course I hope you uh, found the other tips uh, really, really useful for you know consideration for your next car purchase, uh, or even if you own one at the moment, just to help you get the maximum range out of your hybrid or electric car. Guys, thanks again for all of your support uh, leave a like button down below, hit the subscribe button as usual if you want to be notified on videos just like this that come up every Friday at 4pm. This is the second video for 2021, see you next week.